Okay, so here we are in the Blender scene file. And so the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of show you around. Um, if I press uh, zero on the number pad, if you're lucky enough to have a keyboard with a number pad, zero, um, as you might be aware, pops you in and out of uh, whatever the default camera is. So if I just kind of look around the scene, what you can see is that I uh, have a really enormous uh, scene created, actually. And um, this uh, house is actually about the size in meters of a real house. So the reason I did that is that I could get the lighting to be kind of accurate and uh, that the camera itself would give me uh, a field of view that felt pretty natural. And so just to prove that I can select this object, we can press N on the keyboard and pop out our transforms. And under dimensions, you can see that um, you know it's 8.32 meters tall, which actually might be a little bit large. That's something like 30 feet. Um, and I don't know that this structure would necessarily be quite that large, but um, for now, let's just assume that it is. So you can also see I've got a bunch of trees and you want to be careful whenever you make a lot of objects, um, even if it's the same object. Um, what can happen is Berlinder has to start loading a lot of objects and that can take up a lot of um, memory or RAM. And so if you have a computer that doesn't have a lot of spare RAM to go around, um, you want to be careful about showing too many things um, at once. You know, you could, of course, um, disable things. So if we were to turn off, let's say, the viewport um, uh, appearance of that object, but still leave the render setting turned on. When you do render it, they will appear, but it allows you to work much more efficiently here in Blender. Um, and you can always turn those back on. So I'm just going to enable the collection here. Um, if you don't have these icons, remember you can go up to the restriction toggles filter and you have viewport and render uh, here as well. If you want to turn off the ability to select things accidentally, you can also turn on that toggle. I don't really need to use that, so I'm going to leave that turned off. Um, one of the things I did to keep this fairly lightweight is instead of duplicating this with Shift D, which makes a new object based on the old one, I did something called um, Duplicate Linked. That's Alt or Option D on the keyboard, and that will actually create an instance of this object. And then I can independently scale them so and rotate them and so they look different, but it's actually the same object just rotated and scaled um, in different ways. Uh, so that's kind of what I did there. There's nothing particularly special. These are not the greatest trees ever modeled. Um, and the house is actually um, barely got any modeling. I did put a displacement on it to sort of wiggle all the vertices to make it look a bit more cartoony and sort of like um, more of a haphazardly built structure. And uh, if we look at I, my displacement modifiers here, you can see that I'm actually just doing a, a Z direction displacement. So they're just kind of wiggling up and down. Um, so nothing too fancy there. If I tab in, you can see that this is this is what that object looks like without the displacement active. Okay, and then I've got um, just a plane that also has an ocean modifier, and I've configured the ocean modifier here. You can see it's got a lot of resolution, and it's um, just got some subtle um, waves and ripples happening here. This is really processor intensive to animate, so I have actually left it unanimated. I did um, eventually animate it to go vertical, just up and down using keyframes, which um, was pretty easy to do. And okay, let's take a look at what else I have. So you can see here, if I press zero to jump back in, I have the appearance of what look to be mountains in the back. And um, the way that I did that is just by creating a plane with a few um, subdivisions and then just moving vertices up and down to create um, the idea of mountains. So these are essentially cards um, in the background. So they don't have to be fully modeled um, objects. I don't have to actually model mountains. I can just create the appearance of them in the background and that is good enough for my scene. Um, it's a fairly low poly scene anyway, so it fits perfectly. And then I do have um, a moon in the sky here. And if we go to render view, you can see what that looks like. And uh, the moon has a, an emissive 
uh, material on it. So if we go down here, you can see that I've activated the emissive channel under the principal shader. You can actually get rid of the principal shader and use an emission um, shader instead if you'd prefer to do that, if you have light in your scene. Um, light doesn't really bounce around all that well with emission shaders uh, when you're using EV anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, I just needed a bright light in the sky. And uh, as you may have noticed, that's actually just um, a circle. It's uh, with you know, a, a face filled in. So it's just a sort of a crazy end gone um, that has a lot of vertices going around the perimeter. Um, so yeah, that's the moon. And, and then I have a giant plane and then you can see I've added some subdivisions and then manually gone in and just uh, used the um, proportional edit tool to grab uh, vertices. And uh, if I press G here and then Z on the keyboard, I can scroll my mouse wheel and sort of change the influence, the sphere of influence there. I'm gonna escape out of that. Um, but make sure you remember to turn that back off. Otherwise you're gonna drive yourself crazy trying to figure out why your editing's not working very well. Okay, and then um, this is a story about uh, a lonely alien who wants a pet, so he kind of goes down to earth and finds one. And so what we have here is um, an animation of, or kind of blocked animation for what will eventually be, if I were to ever finish this animation, uh, a fully rigged and sort of running dog that would um, move about that fast, stop at the end, and then um, let's just zoom out so you can kind of see what's happening. See that this spaceship is out of uh, view of the camera. So if we jump back in, right, you can't see it, it's there. Um, and then uh, I animate it coming down. And then I've got this cone. Um, and if we select the cone here, you can actually see that I've animated its visibility. So if you didn't know this, you can actually uh, right click and insert a keyframe on whether this is turned on or off. So I actually do both at the same time. I animate the viewport and the render um, visibility together so I don't get confused. Um, but if we were to just kind of um, go closer here. So if we go here, all of a sudden this um, appears. Now you could do the alpha channel uh, material animation to make this material kind of fade in. Um, I'm just kind of brute forcing the visibility here. So I've chosen to kind of animate the visibility of these. So for instance, if you want to make this um, keyframed to be off here and then to move over a frame and then to turn it back on, you can keyframe the off state, move to a different frame and keyframe the on state. And that would make it go from um, invisible to visible. And you can see when it's keyframed, when it's got a green um, background. And if you were to toggle that off, it means that you've made a change, but you haven't yet keyframed that. So if you move, it's gonna kind of reset that um, back to what it was. So just keep in mind, if you wanna keyframe this, um, you wanna move to the frame um, that you wanna keyframe it first, and then go ahead and change it, and then you know um, insert that keyframe. Okay, so I'm not gonna really make any changes there. Um, so that's how I've animated this cone appearing and then disappearing. Um, I could have done something fancier, but this is just an animatic and it's to give the idea of what the animation is supposed to be um, so that you can make decisions about how to improve it. Um, all right, so that I think is basically the whole scene. I do have a few cameras that I have set up, um, but what I'm gonna do is um, jump into my camera and I'm just gonna play through the timeline here. So it's gonna go from frame one to 144. Okay, so you can see here the dog moves to the end of the dock. Oh no, um, something off frame beamed something down and you know, obviously it's UFO. So that's this whole shot. And so I'm not really sure how I wanna cut this together yet. Um, if you know exactly how you want to cut this together, you can go ahead and not render the frames that you know you don't need. 
I don't really know what choices I want to make yet, so I'm comfortable just rendering the entire thing out and then editing it and seeing what I can come up with after the fact. So I mentioned that I have more than one camera. So this is um, camera one um, dash medium. So it, the medium just refers to what I'm calling here a medium shot. I don't know that this is necessarily called a medium shot if you are shooting this for real. That's just kind of my um, way of noting what kind of shot this is uh, for myself. Okay, so I actually have a collection where I'm keeping all of my cameras. Remember I said be really organized? Part of that is keeping your outliner here in Blender organized so you can uh, quickly get to things. So um, here, while you're in um, kind of the active viewport, you can switch active viewports by just clicking on these green icons here in the outliner. So um, you can see here that I've got Cam2, what I'm calling wide, and that basically just shows the mountains, the trees, the entire structure of the house, some water and some ground. Um, this is to help um, be more of an establishing shot. Um, and also it um, has the uh, spacecraft coming down and um, coming into view. So you can actually see the entire thing um, play through from really far, far away. Okay, so just to kind of mention something else, uh, I have some secondary animation here uh, with the trees to just show the force of the uh, spaceship leaving the area. And I think I've also animated this boat slightly. So um, what I wanna do is open up a scene without any animation in it and go through this process of setting up these different cameras and uh, creating default scenes with this configuration. I'm ready to go. Uh, Blender does have a scene manager, so you can configure a scene. So this is the original configuration here with this camera, and then it automatically saves the configuration. So if I jumped through these different scenes here that I've named to match um, what I want the renders to actually be, uh, you'll notice that these are named the same way the folders are. So I can quickly um, re-render later if I need to, and I don't have to try to figure out what it is. Um, so I'll show you how to set these up as well.